When I was about four, I had an imaginary friend named Bamba. I remember pretty well that he wore a purple turban and had darker skin. I made my mom set a place for him at the dinner table and scooched to the edge of my bed every night to make room for him for months. For my dad's birthday that summer, my parents had a party. We had a small pool, and by, the, by this point I was allowed to be in the shallow end with my water wings if an adult was watching me. With the adults all distracted, though, I decided to break the rules and go in with, without my wings or supervision. Hmm. That never ends well. No. Someone noticed me underwater pretty soon after. Head under, but my legs kicking toward the edge. My dad jumped in, fully clothed, and pulled me out. Fuss ensued. When it was clear I was all right, the first thing I said to my mom was Bamba told me to just keep kicking, that I'd make it to the edge if I just kept kicking. The next day, when my mom was setting the table, I stopped her when I saw her set Bamba's place. He was gone, and I guess I stopped speaking of him after that. My imaginary friend saved my life and then dipped out. That's very descriptive of an imaginary friend. Yay, purple turban. It kind of makes it more realistic. It yeah. uh, also sounds like a purple turban is not something most of us would pick for our imaginary friend, at least not yeah. in the U.S. So True. it is fascinating that he had one job. Make sure that that person didn't drown. Yeah, this person's going to do something stupid in a pool yeah. when they're a child because that kid's can do weird things sometimes what if it was that simple what if like in the grand scheme of the cosmos this person had a very specific thing to take care of in their life and there was someone making sure that this one thing didn't go awry and it just happened to be our boy bomba in the purple turban he's like oh that's the job for me son i got this no problem and then this this moment happens saves the day and it's like okay now the rest of your life nothing like this is going to happen you're going to go on and do great things and it's because your boy bomba in the shallow end of the pool. What if before this this kid was born, hmm. he and Bamba were hanging out in the place from before birth, and he's like, Bamba's like, you know, I'm not coming down this time, but I'll be with you. He's like, I got you. And until and you get to, the, to a certain age, then I'll come back because then it's my time. So Bamba just hung out with them on the astral plane, kind of, which could be where all our imaginary friends reside. Yeah, you never think about that. What if, like, dreams, like, as a kid, like, since you are still kind of pure, all your dreams and stuff, you're just astral projecting. <laughs> and so, like, all these people you meet on the other side, you're like, wow, okay. So, it turns out all my imaginary friends are just from the astral plane, but which they is, actually exist somewhere. Which is why kids are magic. Yeah, because... you say that, but it, it sounds weird when you say kids are magic. I think magical is maybe... Uh... I think... I think magical, they, they live in a magical world. They live in different planes of existence. Actually, I'm going to start, I'm going to go a step further and say supernatural. I don't even like the sound like magical sounds Disney. It sounds and like, I know you're a very big Disney fan, but I think supernatural or like gifted or something like that is better than being like their magic. You know I think I mean? magical is ex perfect for Disney. Like the Disney reference mm. makes sense in this mm. because it's not, it's not, you know, supernatural has negative connotations in a lot of ways magical is like you see this world that as we age we lose because just living in society living within these rules you know children have that imagination but sometimes it doesn't feel like it's an imagination it feels like there's something there i had an imaginary friend that was very real to me mm. when i was a kid yeah. and i felt like i was all into astral projections when I was dreaming as a kid and yeah. I, that I can't do now. The world was a lot different, and I remember glimpses of the magical part of it where it's like... But let me let me ask you this. After all that stuff was happening, did your dishes come to life and start singing with you? Talking about be our guests and whatnot? Maybe they could if I because, believed in magic enough. See, that's the, if that would be magical. You'd be like, oh, what a magical moment. But to me, like what you experienced was supernatural or metaphysical or something along those lines, not magical. Like as adults, we can't say it's magical, man. We have to say something more sophisticated. We're sophisticated people sitting in here talking and about And this is the problem stuff. you're saying. As, a, as adults, we can't say something magical. Mm. And that's why, and, and I think you'll see it a lot now that you have a child. Everyone keeps saying that. And you'll tell see, you what, I don't. Because <laughs> you're going to see the world through a different set of eyes. Yeah. And... The way they look at the world is going to be fun for you because 
then you'll look at the world a little differently for a while. And you just got to remember to hold on to a little bit of that because oh yeah, there, you know, we talk about this stuff here all the time, but the world is pretty amazing. The stuff we don't see or we have trouble grasping and yeah. unless it's shadow people like you deal with, I don't deal with those kind of things. So that is why yeah. maybe I can say magical, not as amazing. I'm, I don't look at the, you know, shadow people and be like, Ooh, magical. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, you know, I don't have those experiences. Different. Yeah. So maybe that's why I don't have them too often anymore. Luckily. Yeah. But well, back, that's also back when I was more magical Christian, I definitely saw my share of things. Well, and, and maybe this is a good, good way of what we give to our children. Sometimes, takes the magic away and makes it scary. Mm. And it's not just from a parental point of view, it's society. I mean, yeah, that's one of the problems with having society sometimes is the conformity takes away the magic and the supernatural. Yeah. And sometimes the demons, luckily. <laughs>